Hey everybody, my name is Brianna Sorensen and I am here today with former Navy football player turned NASCAR driver, Jesse Wuji. Jesse, first of all, how are you doing today and where are you at currently? I'm doing good. Um, right now I'm in Southern California. I actually just got back last night from Pennsylvania. We were racing at Pocono Raceway um, yesterday. Um, we were supposed to race on Saturday, but then there was a rain delay. They postponed the race till uh, yesterday. We had it and it was a really, really wild one. If anyone saw it, it was a lot of wrecks and luckily I wasn't involved in any of them. Well, I'm glad you are safe. <laughs> now, first, you are the first Naval Academy graduate to get into NASCAR. So tell me, how did you first get started? Yeah, so um, yeah, it's been definitely a different journey for sure. There hasn't been any other grads that have actually raced in NASCAR. So, you know, when I graduated from the academy in 2010, uh, you know, football was over for me. You know, at the academy, I played football four years. I ran track. Um, once I graduated, I became a surface warfare officer. Um, you know, I went off to two different ships for my first four years in the Navy. Um, you know, I spent, I went on two different deployments with, with those ships. Spent about 15 total months in the Arabian Gulf. And then going into about early uh, 2014, I had this crazy just idea and I was like, you know what, I really like cars. I really like racing. I think it's really cool. Um, you know, during my free time, I would go to tracks and take my personal cars to tracks like drag strips and road courses and stuff like that. And I did that for a few years. So going into 2014, I finally was like, you know what, I really like it. You know, I've never been the type of person to ever keep anything at the lowest level. So why not try to take this to the highest level possible? Why not try to just go for this crazy goal and become a professional race car driver? So I was sitting in my room one night and, and I took my whiteboard off my wall and I wrote on it and I just pretty much wrote, become a professional race car driver. And that was like goal number one. And that's literally where the journey started. And then uh, after that, I basically just started putting a lot of research, a lot of effort into it, trying to figure out, okay, what do I need to do? Where do I need to go? How do I actually make this happen? And uh, through my research, I quickly found out that, that there's a lot of negative people online. There's a lot of people who will tell you you can't do it because, oh, you're not, uh, you didn't come from a racing family, or you don't come from a very wealthy family, or you don't come from this, you don't come from that, blah, 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 all this crap. And I'm like, no, like, I have a vision. Like, God put a vision in my head. That means I can actually do it. Like, he wouldn't have put the vision in my head if it wasn't possible. So then um, through putting this effort and energy into it every single day, trying to figure out what I need to do, it's crazy how doors and paths start like, you know, becoming, you know, part of your life. You start seeing things open up. You start meeting people randomly that you never met before that happened to be in racing, you know? And all of a sudden I met a guy who was racing late model stock cars. And uh, I met him at a car show at the most random place. And uh, he didn't know what my end goal was. He just, you know, knew that I liked cars and had a passion for it. So he just asked me randomly out of nowhere, hey, would you be interested in like, you know, trying out a, a stock car, like going to a circle track and trying one out? And that literally was kind of where the journey began. And then from there, it was a grind to find the money, find all the time, find the resources, this and that, and just find my way through NASCAR. And basically, um, you know, a year after that meeting him, after a year after I tested that car, a year after that went well, um, I, I did my first race in a late model stock car in 2015. And then from there, um, you know, ran a few more races that year and then worked my way up into the NASCAR K&N series. And from there, two years later, worked my way up into the ARCA series. And then after that, worked my way up to where I'm at right now, which is a national series of NASCAR um, at the, in the NASCAR truck series. So uh, it's been a crazy grind, not an easy one for sure. Yeah, I have to know, for a driver who's now at your level, it is not normal to start out after college, right? Like, that's yeah. not, you. that's unusual, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it definitely is for sure. So um, most drivers start when they're super, super young. And when I say young, like, like when they're four or five years old, they start go-kart racing. Um, and it is so cool to see like these little kid carts and see these kids out there racing at the track. They're like, they're so small. Like the helmet's like almost bigger than their body and they're in this go-kart and it's just, just driving around and that's pretty cool. But um, yeah, most of them start at that age and then it becomes like racing becomes second nature to them. Whereas for me, I didn't start until I was 27 years old. So um, I was way past like the regular curve. So um, I had to do a lot to train myself up to even get to a level where I could even drive a race car. And I used my simulator that I have at home to like simulate racing. Um, I did it like every single day and I still use it last five years. That's, that's incredible. Now I have to know, so playing football at Navy, how did that help you in, in your professional career? Yeah, yeah. So um, playing football, um, it helped a lot because I learned a lot, you know, from really, I would say from ninth grade, honestly, all the way up through college, um, playing at the academy, 
Um, just learning how to handle really high stress situations where there's a lot of pressure on you, um, you know, being able to do that while being physically drained, mentally drained. I mean, when you're on a football field, you're wearing all these pads, it's hot, you're getting hit, you're tired, all this stuff is happening. And, and then you're also having to make critical decisions so that you don't lose the game that you're playing. You know, you have a lot of people depending on you. You got to do your job at your position. The same thing in racing. As a driver, I got to do my job in my position, and that's driving the race car because my pit crew, they got to do their job and make sure that everything's tight. If they're putting on the wheels and tires fast enough, they're, um, you know, fueling the, uh, the race vehicle up quick enough. They're doing all that stuff. My crew chief is trying to make all the strategy calls to make sure that we're putting ourselves in a good position to actually, you know, finish well. Um, you know, everyone, the spotter is watching out for me on the track, making sure that I don't hit anyone or no one hits me. You know, uh, all this stuff is happening. It's all this team aspect. And I learned a lot of that in football. And I've just kind of applied it over to racing. Wow. Now, like you just said, there's so many things happening out on the track, but also in your other lives as well. I mean, you're in the reserves, you're a driver for NASCAR, and you have your own company. So tell me, what has it been like over the years balancing so many really different jobs at once? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been a lot. Um, you know, it takes a lot of time for sure. Um, so um, yeah, right now I have some businesses. Um, back in 2015, right when I started racing, I knew that racing was being really expensive, right? So um, every race, it costs a certain amount of money to get there because tires, fuel, people, race vehicles, the hauler, transportation, travel, all that stuff costs a lot of money. So I knew, you know, being a lieutenant at that time, I was like, okay, like I make decent money in the Navy, but it's not enough to like race in NASCAR. So I was like, I got to find some way to make way more money. So I decided, you know what, I'm taking the entrepreneur route with this. Um, while I'm still looking for sponsorship, because sponsorship is here and there, but, um, you know, I was like, let me start my own business. So um, since I knew racing and I knew cars and I, and I liked cars, I was like, why don't I start a business kind of in that world? So what I started doing was I started hosting drag racing events at different drag strips in Southern California. Um, and, it, and it went well. My first event, you know, I had maybe 50 or so cars racing at the event, maybe 300 people in attendance. But by the second event, we had uh, over 100 cars racing, and over 2,000 people in attendance. And this event I've had was actually uh, end of last year where we had over 6,000 people in attendance. So it was really huge and it's been growing a lot. And then um, outside of that, about a year and a half ago, um, I also started a trucking company with my brothers. So um, we have semi trucks on the road right now as we speak, hauling goods all around the country, Southern California, Vegas, Phoenix, Dallas, um, and a little bit in Charlotte, North Carolina. So, um, you know, just kind of putting all the business stuff together is what I've been doing because I want to start my own little uh, entrepreneur empire on the side while I'm working my way up the ranks in, in NASCAR. That's amazing. So you're a very busy man, I'm sure. Now I have to know, how have you combined your love for the Navy and serving with NASCAR through philanthropy? Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, so, um, you know, for me, as I was going through the journey, really I learned pretty early, I would say like early, early, like the first half or first half of the year on my first year racing that, um, you know, there were people out there who were really trying to help me and really try to be there for me. So I quickly realized, I was like, hey, if these people are gonna, you know, put their necks on the line and try to help me the way they're trying to help me. I was like, I need to do the same thing for others. There's people out there who are trying to get somewhere, trying to accomplish different things that might not have certain resources or help or just somebody to tell them that it is possible, you know, something. So for me, every year I've done my best to really try to give back in different ways by, um, you know, with, with different charity events. I've, I've done a lot of appearances, a lot of talks, um, inspirational talks, motivational talks. Um, I've been able to individually go help people myself. Um, you know, for me, um, I'm the type of person where instead of like, just like uh, donating money to a certain charity, I'd rather go and actually do something. I wanna like, like directly and positive, positively help someone in their life, like actually do something that makes a difference in their life. You know, it's easy just to give money, but it's another thing if you can actually put in your time, your effort, your heart, your soul, into someone so that their life actually gets changed. And maybe it's multiple people. So that's what I've been focused on every single year. We've done different things like bringing uh, wounded vets to the track and, and, and doing different things where we honor them on the race car. I've done that for some years. Um, you know, I, I, uh, every year I help NASCAR out with their troops to the track program where they bring um, active duty service members to the track for a lot of the races. And I'll go to a handful of those and I'll actually tour, tour them around, show them to a good, uh, good time. And then you'll know, really kind of show them that, hey, like, 
this is what NASCAR is about. I'm in the Navy, I'm still in the Navy. And you know, it, it's, it's better when they can hear it from someone who's in the military and racing than just you know, a regular employee at NASCAR who might not have military experience or racing experience. So I'm um, just kind of giving that time and being there for people is really what I've been doing over the last few years. And hopefully I can create bigger things eventually as I move up the ladder. That's amazing. Now, you are such a great advocate for making a difference, and you're one of the few African Americans in the NASCAR world. So with all of these social injustices right now, you know, being brought into the spotlight, I have to know, how have you been handling everything and making a difference? Yeah, it's been a lot. It's been a lot, especially over the last few weeks. Um, I didn't realize everything was going to get to a point that I got to, but it did. And, um, but you know what, it's time for everyone to kind of step up right now and really help make some changes. I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on right now. A lot of injustices happening around the world and they didn't just happen right now. They've been happening for years and years and years. And finally people just rose up and was like, Hey, we're sick of this. We need to, we need to fix this. So for me and my platform, what I've been doing is really putting out a really positive message of unity. You know, for me, I'm not the type of person who is just, this is, this is not us versus them or, or one side versus another. This political side or this political side, this race versus this race is what, no. Like for me, it's all about unity. At the end of the day, like the only way for this country to truly rise and become the America that we need to become, um, we have to unite because united will rise, but a house divided will fall. And, and right now, a lot of people out there, some evil people who are really trying to divide this country. And they're, they, they're secretly kind of behind the scenes doing different things. And for me, I'm just trying to put out the, the, the best message I can to unite people and actively, you know, going and speaking. I'm speaking to different groups. I'm going to different organizations, going to different companies and, and really trying to put out messages of, of unity, morality, ethics, morals, all that stuff, just to help people understand that, hey, like, like we need to just, at the end of the day, we just need to be good people. And the more I can put that out, the more I can help people, the more I can change at least one life here and there, um, you know, the world will eventually become a better place. Now, what do you think people can specifically do to really help, to start helping bring this change that's needed? Um, you know, I think people, you know, because a lot of people ask me that question, like, hey, what can I do to help? And, and for me, um, it is, yeah. When I look at everything going on, most of it's going on is because people just don't understand other people who aren't like them, right? So I ask for, for everyone out there, whether you're white, black, Mexican, whatever it is, whatever you are, dive outside of your normal realm, outside of your normal comfort zone. If you're black and all your friends are black, go make some white friends. If you're white and all your friends are white, go make some black friends. Sit down with them and just try to understand them. Like, ask them tough questions, you know, ask them, hey, you know, like, this is me and this is my life. Like, tell me about you. Tell me about your life. Tell me what maybe me or people like me have done to you that maybe you don't like. What can I do to help fix that? And, and just ask those tough questions. Let's not, let's, let's not dance around it and, you know, try to whatever, like, just ask the tough questions and see what is actually needing to be done. And, and it just takes people just sitting down and trying to understand someone different. After that, we all, we all, everyone, no matter what color you are, at home, we have to teach the kids, hey, like, this is what's good, and this is what's bad. This is what's right, and this is what's wrong. And not just tell them once, but really ingrain this in their head every single day and show them good stuff. Because at the end of the day, if we keep putting positive stuff in their minds and show them what's right, like they're going to grow up to be positive members of society. But if we constantly put negative stuff in their mind, you know, a lot of stuff in the media sometimes is just out there to divide us and cause chaos. And we can't, we can't put that in kids' heads because they'll, they soak that stuff up and they don't know any better. All of a sudden, they start believing one way, believing this way. They're not even five, six years old yet. And that's not good. We got to put positive stuff in their mind, really monitor, hey, what are these kids watching on TV? What are they seeing? What are they taking from social media? Like, let's monitor that and let's give them the right information. We all know what's right and wrong. Let's give them the right stuff. Absolutely. It definitely all starts in the home, 100%. Now, I have to know, now you, this is really nothing new with you trying to bring positive change. You were named the 2016 and 2017 NASCAR Diverse Driver Award, which is given to a driver who has done the most for diversity in the sport. So what do you personally, I have to know, hope that NASCAR looks like 10 to 20 years from now? 
Yeah, um, it was it's definitely great. Winning the award was cool. Um, getting recognized for the efforts and trying to really bring NASCAR to different places that is normally not, you know, especially different inner city communities and all that. And for me, you know, 10, 20 years from now, I, I want the sport to be more like, you know, some of the other sports like the NBA and, and football and all that stuff where you see all different races and, 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 and people um, in the crowd. Whereas, you know, right now, I mean, majority of people who are in the crowd is majority, you know, white. And, and you know, there's nothing wrong with white people being at the, you know, at the track, but we need more color. We need more people. We need everybody because it will add different culture and different aspects to it and make it even more exciting. And uh, NASCAR is doing a really, really good job right now trying to make this thing as inclusive as possible. So that's why they've gone even as far as, um, you know, banning the Confederate flag at all the tracks. So, you know, you can't bring it there now. Um, and doing different things really try to show people that, hey, like it is a very open and inclusive sport. We want you to be there no matter who you are. Um, come enjoy the sport because it's fun. And, and most people who do go to a NASCAR race, um, no, I, I haven't heard of anyone going to a NASCAR race and saying, man, that was the worst experience ever. Most of them go and they say that was the funnest time ever. But let's let's take away some barriers that maybe make people not want to try it at first. Now I have to know that's, you know, your goals for NASCAR, but what are your specific goals for yourself in NASCAR? Yeah, um, so my specific goals, is, so right now I'm in the NASCAR truck series. I got two steps above me before I'm at the top level, which is the NASCAR cup series. Um, you know, I basically want to make my step up to the next level here soon, hopefully, um, and run some NASCAR Xfinity series. And then from there, uh, make it up to the cup series. And then when I get there, you know, my goal is just to run there full time for a lot of years. I mean, I would like to be racing in NASCAR for at least the next 10 years or so. And, and the goal is to eventually uh, put myself in a position where I'm in really competitive equipment and I can actually go out and fight for top tens, fight for top fives, fight for wins, and then maybe one day fight for a championship. That's the ultimate goal that I have in NASCAR. And I think along that way, it'll help continue to build a platform so I can continue to do good things out there in different communities all around the country and uh, really just kind of help people and, and show people that, hey, I'm just, honestly, I'm just a regular guy just going after my big goals and dreams. I'm just showing people that it's possible as long as you put your mind to it, you believe and you never let someone's opinion of you become your reality. Well, with your work ethic and personality, I am sure you will make it to that next level. But thank you so much for talking to us today, Jesse. And thank you so much for being such a positive advocate for change. Yeah, yeah, no, thank you so much for having me. And, you know, for anyone out there who's looking to, you know, continue to follow the journey and all that stuff, make sure you go on social media, find me on there. I'm super easy to find. I got my same name on basically everything. So Jesse Wuji, J-E-S-S-E. Uh, I W U J I. And if you can't remember that, just go on Google, type in Navy NASCAR driver. I should be the only one that pops up for a few pages. And then uh, go to my website and uh, sign up for my email list because um, we're trying to build a big list of people so that we can, you know, continue to feed good information to people, let everyone know what's going on and, and, and show people different ways they can help support this journey. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Jesse.